Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. For those of you who have never seen a video by me, please go through the back catalogue and you'll see the journey that I've been on with my gorgeous Model Y Performance 2024. The car's called Sylvia, for obvious reasons, because the car's silver, and I picked her up on May the 23rd and I've got a diary basically of from when I first picked her up right way to the point we're at now. Now this car's just gone over 2,000 miles, just literally by about two miles. So what I thought I'd do, I'd take you on the journey that I've had with her, and I can take you through what's good and what's bad about this beautiful Model Y performance. And please stick around because at some point in the video, I'm going to be giving away a very, very exciting free giveaway. So stick around, get yourself a cup of coffee, sit back and relax and watch the video. So let's start off with the build quality. This car is a Model Y performance made in China in May 2024. The panel gaps are absolutely spot on. There is no variance in the panel gaps at all. The rear lights fit flush to the bodywork and the paintwork is absolutely fantastic. I've got no issues at all with the paintwork. The paintwork is an extra £2,600, which is a lot of money, but I just wanted something that was different. Um, I've had a white standard range, a white Model 3 Performance, a black Model Y long range, and this is the fourth one I've had. And as I said, the panel gaps, the fittings on the external of the car, I can't fault them. If you look at the bonnet, the alignment is really good. The panel gaps are strong. So overall, external build quality of this car is absolutely fantastic. No issues at all. So while we're talking about exterior, I want to talk to you about the colour choice that you may make or you've already made. But from my experience, I've had two white Teslas, a black one and now a silver one. The white Teslas hide any imperfections really well. So things like scratches, stone chips, swell marks, the white is definitely the way to go. Black is probably the worst car I had regarding stone chips and swell marks, and they stand out really heavily as well when you start getting them. So be very mindful of that um, when you get your car. Now, the silver car is really good at hiding the dirt. In the UK, we get lots of rain. Um, so from that point of view, it's really good. Stone chips haven't got an issue really with it yet. Uh, and as I said to you earlier, the swell marks, you don't get them. So silver is a really good colour choice. It does cost an extra £2,600, which is a lot of money. However, I'm really happy with the choice I've made on this silver car. Right, I'll take you through the likes and dislikes of the car. We'll start off at the rear. And as you can see, we're greeted with an abundance of room in the back of this vehicle. I've took the parcel shelf out just to give you a better view of what you can see. Now, the great thing is I love these little side pods. I think they're a fantastic little addition. You've got your space underneath um, the cargo mat here as well. And I can fit three bags of golf clubs in here. I've had loads of camping stuff in here. I've even had me in here. So what I do, drop the back seats down. I'm six foot one tall and I can fit in this car with room to spare. Have a great night's sleep, put camp mode on, put your Netflix on, chill out and enjoy the sky on a lovely night through your panoramic roof. Fantastic. One of the dislikes is this black rubber trim that you can see here. It discolours quite easily and it marks quite easily. Now, it's easy remedied with an interior cleaner. Or you might even get away with a damp cloth, but I don't know. I don't know what the finish is. I can't describe what the texture is like, but yeah, it's it's just something that I dislike. Also, the little gaps down here. When you're cleaning your car, you get loads of little bits. You can see little bits in here, but again, you just get the nozzle of your vacuum cleaner in there, and it gets it out. But it's a little niggle of mine, and down here as well on the locking mechanism. So one of the likes is the boot setting system that you've got some people know about it some don't so i'll just take you through it quickly so this boot is fully extended to its maximum height 
Now, for some people, when they go into car parks, especially if they are multi-storey, the roofs can be a bit low on them. And the danger is you're going to damage the tailgate of your boot. So to combat that, what you do, you drop the boot of your height by just pressing the button. Stop it. Drop it a bit more. Stop it. And then what we'll do, we'll set it at that height. You just press your finger in. Hear the beep. And that is now set at that maximum height that you've just set it to. So as you can see, I've dropped it down substantially to combat the imaginary roof in a multi-storey car park. So if I shut the boot down and then I'll reopen it again. It stops to that exact height that I've set the car at. Now, just to demonstrate that I've done that, I'll push it up further. It will go to the maximum height. I'm now going to press it. And I've now got that set to the maximum height. Another like I've got is this on the rear seats. What you do, if you keep pressing in, you can see it moves. So if you recline it right back as far as it goes, take your fingers off and you can see how far that is reclined back. And it just gives your rear passengers so much more comfort. Again, the room in the back of this car is outstanding. You can fit three people in here very comfortable. And that seat is set at my setting. And as I said, I'm six foot one and you can sit in there very comfortable. So from a passenger point of view, front and rear, the room is outstanding. Back to dislikes. I think Tesla could have done something different with this because as you can see, it gets marked up very easily. It does clean relatively easy, but it's just another little niggle of mine that could have been done in a different material another dislike is the rear of the seats it's just hard plastic to be fair it is good for keeping clean but it does not look to the standard of what a 63,000 pound car looks like i just think they could have made that a bit better and a little bit more flashier for want of a better word now, I like the black seats. My other car had white seats in it, and I do prefer the white seats from a maintenance point of view. So if you look here, you can just see, you can just see this mark on the, it's only a dirt mark, but it shows up really, and you can see the odd little, I don't know what it's like, greasy mark, I don't know what it is, but you've got to keep on top of them a lot more than what you do with white seats. Now, please do not get fooled by some of the videos on YouTube saying that you need this product and that product. All you need is a damp rag with a bit of uh, washing up liquid on and that does it perfect and it keeps your seats nice and clean until you mark them again like that. So do not be fooled into purchasing expensive interior products because you do not need them. Now again, the front interior, again, plenty of leg room, plenty of space. And I love that centre console to rest your arms on. And both passengers can rest their arms on there with room to spare. As you can see, I've put carbon wrap all over where the wooden trim was. I think the car looks so much better for it. So, yeah, the wooden trim does not make this car look good at all. Another dislike of mine is the top half of the interior i think tesla could have give you an option to give you a darker interior to match the alcantara potentially um that has the potential to mark but it does come off very easily with a wet wipe if you do get marks on it but i just think it would have blended in a lot better again finer detail i know but i don't know what this is it doesn't feel very nice at all and it marks very, very easy. But again, with an interior cleaner, it does come off, but it does gather the dust very quickly. So I think Tesla needs to look at this and get this changed because it's like a dirt collector. As you can see, I've got a camera lens over the camera. This is, for me, one of the best buys I've ever had and it only cost me about two pounds. 
for a pack of six and basically it just sticks over the camera lens with the shutter on as you can see the shutter if you close it let me try it there you go that basically brings autopilot back to normality rather than bleeping at you every two seconds so great little addition for that as well right onto the front of the vehicle i've just popped the bonnet and this is a huge dislike of mine imagine i just polished my car now put your fingers under this little lip lift it up give it a little flick and then the bonnet opens up perfectly well i've accessed this huge space to get something out and now i've got to close this bonnet so to close it i have to put my fingers over the top of the lip onto the paintwork i've just polished and shut it down now what you're supposed to do is put one hand this side one hand that side and give it a firm press now i can do it like this and it locks it however you know you can't really see it because the paint works silver um that's going to have prints all over the paintwork after you've just polished your car now come on tesla i doubt anyone in tesla's watching this but it, just on the off chance he is please supply these cars with electronic opening and closing boots it won't cost much to do even put on as an added option if you if you don't want to spend the money but at least give us that option another dislike is the tesla ultra turbine wheels now i love the style of them i think they look great however as we all know they curb very easily and if you check out a video of my catalog you'll see me um having to deal with that however you can get these rim protectors so if you're in the market for a model y performance or a model 3 performance for that matter make sure you put these rim protectors on your wheels because you will curb them it doesn't matter how good a driver you are you will curb these wheels now i have seen videos where people put on wider wheels when they change the wheels up so it's something i look into and that gives the the rims a bit more protection but i'm not sure if you would lose a bit of range by doing so so we'll see what happens when i, I get to that stage but you must 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 get them rim protectors Right, everybody, so it's free giveaway time. As you can see, it's the ventilator cooling seat system by Tilliard. It retails at £350 on their website. This product could be yours if you're the owner of a Model 3 or a Model Y. It fits any Model Y up until the Highland version that was released, and it fits any Model Y. Excellent system, and as I say, please check out the video that I did earlier. Now, the rules for this free giveaway is you must be a subscriber. So if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe and go into the comments section and just type the word free. That way I'll know that you've entered into the draw. The video announcing the winner will be published on August the 8th. So you've got two weeks to enter this competition. And what do you want for free? Now, if you live in the UK, this product will be delivered free of charge. However, externally to the UK, you will have to take the hit for the delivery cost. But either way, it's still a fantastic prize. Good luck to everyone wins. When I got this car back in May 2024, there was a few things I was thinking about at the time. I was considering just getting a new long range, putting the acceleration boost on. Uh, but when you weigh the cost of that up, there's only about two, two and a half thousand pound difference between uh, the Model Y performance and putting the acceleration boost on the long range. So I just thought, you know, I'm going to bite the bullet and, and just get the car. And I'm pleased I did because the car has shown me so many different surprises compared to my Model Y long range that I had. Now, when I say surprises, I can only compare my Model Y performance against my Model Y long range that I had. The Model Y long range was a 2022. Now, once I picked the car up and I was driving home, I'm going down the motorway at 70 miles an hour, I could just hear the difference in noise. It was like you could hear a pin drop. So something has definitely happened uh, in 2024 with the improvement of the cabin noise because it's a huge improvement. The other thing I've noticed is, for some reason, this car seems more efficient than my 2022 long range. And I can't understand why, because this is a, a performance. Now, I have done a video 
where I basically take the car from 100% charge down to zero and I got 300 miles range just driving normally no harsh acceleration just driving speed limit and the car did 300 mile range with a bit to spare so that just shows you how much uh, this car can do compared to the 2024 version where I would get about 280 290 out of it if I squeezed it really hard so a huge difference there another thing worth mentioning is the suspension now I do a daily commute every day and I can feel every lump and bump and I know the difference between how bad a lump and a bump is on that route and in the Model Y performance it's a huge improvement compared to the long range and again I'm hearing the change of the suspension on the, the Model Y performance I don't think there's any big hoo-ha made about it from Tesla but there is definitely a huge improvement in the suspension which gives you a better ride than the model y 2022 now i'm 2000 miles into this car and i've still got no creaks rattles squeaks anything the car is absolute perfection and again on the old car there was just so many rattles and groans i, I can't describe it. it used to do my nutting uh, the slightest little squeak i pick up on but nothing absolutely nothing on this car just pure silence now one of the biggest adjustments i've had to do is get used to tesla vision and i've seen and read all the horror stories that tesla vision is nowhere near as good as cars with sensors now i'm going to hugely disagree there because i think tesla vision is streets ahead of sensors and once you've got used to it and you know your boundaries it's a fantastic piece of kit and that's only going to improve with more software upgrades as time goes by but the, the quality of the vision that you get with tesla vision compared to the vision you got with the sensors is streets ahead so please do not be fooled by the doom and gloom as that say that tesla vision is rubbish because i promise you it's not now i touched on this next one um, earlier in the video but it's basically it's white seats versus black seats now there are, it's a personal choice however if you are picking black seats because you're scared of how long white seats will last take that out of your mind because white seats last well on my model y they lasted me 52,000 miles and they look brand new and all i did was clean it with a damp cloth and a bit of washing liquid that's all i used so as I said earlier, do not get fancy products that are going to cost you an arm and a leg. Stick with the rag and the detergent and them seats will maintain like brand new. And all you've got to do is do it once every four weeks and you'll be happy enough. Promise. If you prefer black seats then and you haven't owned white seats before, then as someone who's owned both, I promise you, black seats are harder to maintain than white now another great thing I love with the new model is it comes with hardware 4 and everything just seems crisper, the cameras seem bigger, the, the screen seems crisper, I know it's, I think it might have potentially got a different chip in it, I'm not quite sure but I think it has, but the hardware 4 and you can tell if you've got hardware 4 in your car because if you look at your cameras you'll see a red tint, that tells you it's got hardware 4 in it or if you go through the service manual inside your tesla screen it'll tell you on there as well but the main the main culprit is the red tint on your camera that tells you that your car comes with hardware 4 and it is fantastic now couple that up with the spring download and it just makes the tesla a completely different car to prior to the spring download coming out it's got so much on it it makes the driving experience so much better I love the fact that it spots a speed camera. I love the fact it chimes before you see that speed camera. I love the, the way it does average speed um, as you're going down a restricted speed zone on a motorway. And the graphics and you know the picture of your car, that first creature when you get in the car, everything about it just makes that a better driving experience altogether. Now, I'm no eco warrior and the reason I got a Tesla for was not because I want to save the world or save the planet, which obviously I do care about for my, my children and grandchildren, 
But the main reason I got the car was because it was cheap to run. Now when I say cheap to run, to charge my car from 0% to 100% and gives me 300 miles of range, it cost me £6.30. So just think of that, £6.30 for 300 miles of range. Um, it's a no-brainer, absolute no-brainer. On top of that, you don't service the Tesla, You, I, don't, I currently don't pay road tax and I know that will change next year. How much by, I don't know, but I can't see it being as much as what it would be if I had my old BMW. So from a cost point of view, um, no maintenance, really, apart from changing your tyres and topping up your washer fluid, it's a huge saving compared to any other non-EV. Now, we all know about the performance of a Tesla and how quick it goes and how fast they go at the top end. So mine in particular, it goes 3.5 seconds north to 60 and it does 155 mile an hour. Not that you're ever going to need that, of course, but it's nice to know you've got that in your tank in case you get into a sticky situation. So that's a huge plus for me. And finally, we all know with the gadgetry that this car has, it's also become probably the safest car to drive in the world. And that is a fantastic thing to have, especially when you're driving, you know, your family around in the car, because you know if you're going to get involved in an accident, the chances are you're going to come out with that car alive uh, compared to other cars. And if you look at other videos where they do crash testing, and there's loads of them flitting about on YouTube, and you see the survival rates, Tesla comes out top. So, you know, just for that reason alone, it's worth getting a Tesla. So I just want to say thank you very much for sticking out through this video. Please like and subscribe. I'm trying to grow the channel and there's plenty more content coming your way. Don't forget this excellent free giveaway that I'm dropping in. And please, if you're fast forwarded through the video to the end, you need to go back through the video to see this excellent free giveaway that I'm giving and what you need to do to enter that giveaway. So thank you for now, speak to you all later and have a great day.